One man who might be able to give us some insight into how the Demons at least are feeling. He's been there as a player. He's now an assistant, of course. And that is Adam Uzo as we head the Joondal up. Uh, Adam, really appreciate your time so close to the opening bounce. How are you and how do you think your troops are? Yeah, well, I'm better now. <laughs> had a few few days of a um, bit of food poisoning, but feeling better now. But yeah, um, yeah, our boys are our boys are ready. Uh, they've had a really good, or well, strong two weeks of training. Um, went for a little walk this morning, um, just to get out and about. Just went to the oval around the corner, and um, yeah, they're nice and relaxed, and I think they're ready to go. So we have a look at it. G'day, Adam. Good luck today, too. Hey, uh, we have a look at him in, in racing parlance. Any of them come close to sweating up this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a few of the coaches did. Um, or we are. Um, but, no, they, they seem um, really relaxed. It was funny, I think, because we've had so long uh, to, in the lead-up. Um, I think they were a little bit more nervous last week. So, um, yeah, we had a really strong hit out last Saturday. Um and, yeah, we're prepared really well. So uh, today they they seem OK. We've obviously got a 40-minute bus, tr bus trip into the city. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how loud they are in um, on the bus in going into the game. But right now um, the feeling is that they're pretty confident. We try and draw parallels from our own careers. And, we, you know, predominantly we played at two, 10 past two on a Saturday. So grand final day, as you experienced as well, you wake up and you, your system, your routine is locked in. So it's another day and it gets you into the routine, take your mind off the enormity of the occasion because you're right in that routine. There's a big space today. There's a lot of time for them to actually think about. Is that help or hindrance? Yeah, well, I think having a prelim um, as a night game as well um, is, a, is a nice lead-in. So, um, yeah, our, our players are prepared for that. Um, and even being over here in Perth, it's a five, it's a five fifteen start um, rather than a seven fifteen. Yeah. So you've got to, so you're sort of getting ready by lunchtime rather than middle of the afternoon. So um, yeah, like I said, we're, we're fortunate that the prelim was just exactly the same um, set up, and uh, hopefully we can perform the same. It was good luck today. Hope it goes really well. I just want to know when when did you know that this was potentially a special team? Was there a marker in the year or a point where you thought we could actually be quite brilliant as as a group? Uh, yeah, whether you say special team or brilliant, but um, I knew we had a lot of potential from the minute I walked into the footy club. So looking from afar, um, even from last year, um, just missing out on the finals um, uh, was a pretty good effort, but you could see that they had some talent or we had some talent that um, could take us a fair way into September. So, um, yeah, so from the from the minute the players walked in, they were really driven from day one of pre-season. So um, if you've got that, um, that drive within your footy club, um, you're sort of, you're halfway there. So setting a plan and setting a, a really basic game plan um, around that, um, yeah, I, I thought the sky could be the limit. Can, can I ask you some specifics on the way that you've tried to coach this midfield and particularly Petrarca and Oliver and the way they used to distribute the ball from the inside of the stoppage by hand to get to the outside. But by all reports, uh, you've had a major influence on the, the leg drive component to take the ball themselves from inside to outside. And it's had an amazing impact on scores from stoppages. Can you let us in a little bit on, on those conversations and how that unfolded? Yeah, I suppose, um, like scouting a Melbourne team of old, and, and in saying that, they, were, they made the prelim in 2018, but there was a... Um, there was a theory about uh, around that if you could match them in the inside, you could beat them on the outside. So uh, they always had, and they all, and we still do. We've got contested players that are very good on the inside and um, at a, and amazing at their craft. Um, so just being able to balance that with the structure around that allows us to have the best of both. Um, so we've come up against a team, and this team today is probably the best at it from going from inside to out. Um, Geelong are very strong at it and have been for years, and so have Hawthorne. So, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to obviously spend a lot of time at Hawthorne that um, the balance around stoppage and, and contest is is critical. Um, so it gives you the best of both. So um, we still trust that we've got some strong inside bulls and um, but hope that uh, our, our, our mindset and our method around that gives us the best of both. So Clary, Clayton and, and um, obviously Christian have been uh, pivotal to that. And, and as you can see in the vision, they're still... Um, doing what they what they normally do inside, but then given an opportunity to get on the outside and get some different possession than what they used to. So um, hopefully that's shining through. Ooze, we all want to get to the grand final when we do get that opportunity, feeling good, 
free of knocks, free of aches, free of pains. One game in the best part of 29 days. Is that the perfect prep? Uh, well, we're hoping it is. Um, but leading into the prelim, um, we had exactly the same um, program. So we knew we had a two-week break leading into the pre prelim. And, and in saying that, it wasn't a two-week break. We had two really strong hit-outs that were high risk, um, uh, but it needed to be done. So, um, yeah, we understood that the, the way that the final series um, is the set out of that is the, the teams that obviously didn't finish in the top four that had a different run through to the um, to the back end of the final. So um, we set a really good plan. We got some really good results in the prelim. And um, so we stuck to that. And, and like I said, two two major hit outs during the week that, that were game-like and, and with game intensity um, would hopefully feel like it's not two games in four weeks. Adam, I'm wondering in the last, say, five or six days, if anything has changed tactically. Like, if it was a one-week gap, would you have the run out with the same plan exactly? Or if you, you know, with a couple of nights out, thought, oh, I've thought of something. We might just need to adjust this slightly. Yeah, I think every morning we wake up with a different plan. <laughs> we come up with, I think a lot of the coaches that put their head down, going to sleep at night and then um, coming up with a different idea in the morning. But that's the, that's the, obviously the risk with the two-week break leading into the grand final. So, um, no, we've tried to keep everything really similar. We're not going to... We're not going to give our players anything different that we haven't done all year. So there will obviously be different levers that we can pull game day that um, that we've done or that we have uh, pulled during the year. But, we, yeah, there won't be any tricks um, or anything different that the players wouldn't have seen before. So um, trying to keep it as as basic as we can and as we have done all year. So Melbourne fans watching at home, watching on the, the screen tonight, what should they be looking for to say, yep, we're on top here? We know the dogs like to flood numbers around around the action, around the stoppage and, and make it difficult for you to move the ball. What, what, what specifically could they see to say we're in control here? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I think control is going to be a, a really tough um, thing to do. So against the doggies, there's a lot of momentum, momentum shifts. So the game against the Bulldogs... I mean, against um, the Lions, there was times in that game where you felt like the Lions were right on top and then the Doggies would kick two or three in a row. So, um, But for us, we understand that they're, they're very strong around the footy. Their contested ball and their clearances are, are pivotal the way that they play the, uh, play the game. So um, there's going to be different things and, and there will be some momentum shifts in that area. But, um, yeah, we feel like we've... Um, we've planned really well for it. We understand. We've played them three times this year. Um, and in, in those games, there was momentum shifts as well. So, um, yeah, so I think our supporters, if we see a high-energy, high, high, energy, high pressure game from our, from our players that are, that are connected defensively, then we give ourselves a big, a big chance of winning this game. Well, congratulations on what you've achieved so far. Of course, the big one is still to cut. You got time for room service before you go, or are you? <laughs> no, no. Don't take the bread risk. and butter for me. <laughs> Don't take the risk. Th thanks for joining yeah. us. Good luck tonight. No worries, guys. Thanks, thanks. Good luck, Adam Uzo, former star of the Ds, and of course now one of the key assistants. And as you alluded to, he's made a, a big contribution to this team.